subscribe to our channel for latest video series on gain UGC net and more. Also press the bell icon so that you never miss an update on any latest video. For more information you can visit our website or call on the numbers below. Now we look at Laplace transform of some commonly used signal. Laplace transform of some common signals that we're using uh, here and there okay so we are just going to look at these uh, laplace transform and we're going to remember them so that we can use these results directly in all the questions okay we do not need to calculate them again and again so firstly we start with unit impulse signal unit impulse delta t <coughs> so if you just try to find out laplace in, uh, of delta t using the basic definitions is going to be integration minus infinity to infinity delta t e to the power minus st dt now we know this property of the impulse function right if you are just uh, this use the shifting property this is going to be e to the power minus t at t is equal to 0 since this impulse occurs at t is equal to 0 and since t is equal to 0 is included in the limits of integration you are going to have value of this function at t is equal to 0 which is going to be 1. So what do we say Laplace transform of an impulse function is 1 and what is going to be the ROC all values of s for all values of s laplace transform of impulse function is going to be 1 now if you just look at unit step unit step function ut so these are some functions we are using uh, all the time right so that is why we are just calculating them for once and all so this is going to be integration minus infinity to infinity ut e to the power minus st dt now since this ut occurs for values of t greater than 0, so I can just modify these limits and change them from 0 to infinity, e to the power minus st dt. Now this integration is going to be e to the power minus st upon minus s for limit 0 to infinity. Now if you just put the limits, this is going to be e to the power minus infinity minus e to the power 0 upon minus s. Now this is going to occur only when this s is a positive number. See, if s is a negative number itself, this is going to become e to the power infinity and the Laplace is not going to converge, okay? This is not going to converge. So this is possible only when s is a positive number. And in that case, this is going to be 0 minus 1 upon minus s, which is 1 upon s. But when, only when real part of s is greater than 0, okay? It, because only in that case, this is going to converge, right? So, Laplace of unit step signal is going to be 1 by s. Okay, so uh, now see, you can just evaluate uh, this Laplace transform for different signals like this. I am giving this uh, once using a table. So, we have taken all the basic signals in this table and we are going to see what their Laplace transform is going to be. So, we just calculated this uh, Laplace transform for impulse signal which was 1 as we have seen and ROC was entire S plane, all values of S, right? Now, uh, this uh, Laplace transform for UT which we calculated was 1 by S and ROC we saw was real part of s should be greater than 0. Now if you just perform this uh, same operation for minus u of minus t, see uh, we've done this uh, when we started Laplace also. This also came out to be 1 by s but one thing that we saw was ROC is going to be different. ROC was real part of s should be less than 0. See one thing that you should take care is we have taken this minus sign here. If you're just calculating Laplace for u of minus t that is a non-anticausal signal then you'd obtain a minus sign with this Laplace okay. When we are obtaining the same Laplace because I've taken this minus sign here. Now there's a property of multiplication with t. What happens with multiplication with t? So I'm going to take this one first. What happens when you multiply any signal, any general signal when you are multiplying with this ut, uh, this t to the power something, what is going to happen? Uh, this is going to be this power, this power was k, so I am going to obtain k factorial in the numerator, k factorial in the numerator. And in the denominator, what is going to happen? S is going to increase its power by k. Increase its power by k means already 1 by s was there because of this ut. Since I multiplied with t to the power k, I increased its power with 
K. Okay. Now this is not going to affect my ROC. So ROC is still going to be real part of S greater than zero. Why? Because this was already a right-handed signal. Still, it is a right-handed signal. Okay. Multiplication with this does not affect this uh, signal's nature. Right now, if you just calculate this t into u t, my Laplace transform for this function, you can see that value of k is one here. So what are you going to obtain? One factorial, which is one itself, and in the denominator also you're going to obtain s square. Putting k is equal to one. Okay, so multiplication with t is going to make this uh, this signal one by s square. Again. ROC is going to remain the same. Now there is one other property which is multiplication with e. Okay, e to the power something. What is going to happen? This is going to create a shift in S domain. See, multiplication with e in time domain is going to create a shift in S domain. And similarly, multiplication with e in the so if you are providing a shift in this time domain, you are going to get multiplication factor of e in the S domain. And if you are multiplying with e in the time domain, you are going to get a shift in S domain. Okay, we're going to look at properties, uh, multiplication property, shifting property, everything uh, in the next section. So uh, maybe you can complete this table yourself then. Uh, okay, so we'll leave it for now. After we study properties, you can just complete these four rows. Okay, it would be very convenient for you. For now, you can look at these one. So uh, Laplace transform for cos omega naught t u t is going to be s upon s square plus omega naught square and again right handed signal that is why ROC is going to be real part of s greater than zero similarly for sin omega naught t ut it is going to be omega naught upon s square plus omega naught square see this is a bit confusing sometimes so denominator for both of them is same in cos omega naught t we are having s in the numerator for sin omega naught t we are having omega naught so uh, one way to remember this is since sine has s since there is a s in sine no s in it laplace transform cos omega naught t does not have an s so s in its laplace transform so there is one way to remember i use this way maybe it is uh, helpful for you also only one s either in s domain either in time domain okay so you can just remember this uh, in cos we are having s in the numerator in sine we are having omega naught in the numerator roc for both of them is going to be the same now uh, i've left these rows you can just complete them maybe after your uh, studying properties of laplace transform it would be easy so next we are going to look at properties of laplace transform properties so what happens to Laplace transform when we are performing different operations to the signal? How is Laplace transform going to change? Okay, that is what we are going to look now. So first property that we look at is linearity. Linearity. So what does linearity mean? If Laplace transform of x1 t was x1 s. If Laplace transform of x2 t was x2 s. Then what do we say? Then a1 x1 t plus a2 x2 t is going to have Laplace transform a1 x1 s plus a2 x2 s. This is what linearity is. Okay, we've, we've seen this already also. Linearity means combination of superposition and homogeneity. That is what we are doing. Okay, and one more thing. If this ROC for this signal was R1 and ROC for this one was R2, then what is going to be the ROC? ROC is going to be R dash, which is a set of R1 intersection R2. Now, what does this mean? Uh, this this uh, symbol means that set A contains set B. Okay, if I am writing something like this, this implies that set A contains contains set B. Okay, which means that and this okay. This, this symbol means intersection. That means all the common points of R1 and R2 will be a subset of this ROC of combined signal. ROC for this signal is going to contain intersection of individual ROCs. Right? So this is how we are defining linearity in Laplace transform. Okay, and about ROC, what can we say? ROC of the resultant Laplace transform is at least as large as the region in common between R1 and R2. Fine. 
so now look at the next property which is time shifting time shifting means that if a signal if a signal xt had laplace transform xs and roc r then then if i'm creating a shift of t not in my signal in time domain then what happens to the laplace transform it is going to get multiplied with e to the power minus st not xs roc is going to remain the same though okay see uh, when i created a shift of minus t not i multiplied with minus st not okay e to the power minus st not if i created a shift of t plus t not what would happen e to the power plus st not xs okay still roc would be same so this is how we performing time shifting operations right now next property that you looking at is shifting in s domain shifting in s domain so what happens how can we uh, just get a shift in s domain so if a signal xt has laplace xs and roc r then if you multiply this signal with e to the power s not t xt this is going to make a shift of minus s not shift of s not in this s domain and roc is also going to change how this is going to become r plus real part of s not see uh, one thing that you can see is roc associated with x of s minus s not is that of x s shifted by s not right see here we had s only right we had s only so roc was associated with this s only now since the argument changed argument became s minus s not therefore roc is going to be associated with this signal and shifted by real part of s not since we have just added this right we have added s not that is why in roc also we added this real part of s not fine uh, so we can just uh, see this using a image also maybe you'll understand better <clears throat> suppose a function roc uh, suppose we had one signal whose laplace transform was x of s and its roc was defined something like this okay something between alpha and beta suppose this was this is my r this r okay this was my r now what happened when i multiplied this signal with e to the power s not t what is going to happen my my laplace transform this is going to shift shift by s not shift by s not what does this mean these instances alpha and beta are going to shift right yes they are going to shift what is this point going to become now this is going to be alpha plus real part of s not right since this r uh, this this uh, laplace has become x of s minus s not and this is also going to become what beta plus real part of s not now my roc is going to lie between these two points right now what is this going to be this is going to be my r dash now you see why why this r dash what am i saying about this r dash is r dash is going to be r which was this portion plus real part of s not because each of my instances shifted by real part of s not right so this is what uh, this is how we can perform shifting in the s domain by multiplication with e to the power s not t one more thing that you should not confuse is see when you are shifting in time domain if you are shifting by minus t not you are multiplying with e to the power minus s t not shifting by plus t not multiplying with e to the power plus s t not but in shifting in s domain if you are shifting by plus you are doing this shift is minus okay this is a sign reversal opposite signs okay if you are shifting by s minus s not you are getting multiplication in plus s not t okay so just keep this in mind keep both of these things in mind so that you do not create any uh, mistakes right now look at the next property next property is time scaling time scaling so what are we saying if xt has laplace transform xs and roc r of course then 
what happens when you scale this in time what is that going to happen is you're going to obtain 1 by mod a x of s by a and what is going to be the ROC? ROC is also going to get scaled by R. So you can just verify these properties very simply using the basic definition of Laplace transform that we have using the integral. Okay, you can just verify these properties. We're just listing them for uh, use, right? So uh, you can just see how this ROC got modified uh, again using the same thing. If my ROC was something like this, lying between alpha and beta right if this was r this was sigma j omega so if this was r initially then when you are scaling this uh, function in time what happened to my laplace transform it got scaled it got scaled by 1 by a which means that i need to multiply all the time instances by a right so this is going to become a alpha this is going to become a beta and now I'm going to have ROC like this. So what can you say about this? This is going to be my R dash, right? So what can you say about this R dash? R dash also got scaled by A, right? R dash is equal to A into R. So what am I saying is that uh, scaling the time variable T by a factor A causes an inverse scaling of the variable S by 1 by A and amplitude scaling of 1 by mod A, right? Fine. Next property that you're going to look is time reversal. Time reversal. Uh, so this is basically same as scaling only the scaling factor we are putting as minus 1 right so ROC was R now you scale this by minus 1 so this is going to be mod of minus 1 is 1 only so this is going to be minus S and of course ROC is also going to reverse so time reversal of XT produces a reversal of both the sigma and j omega axis in the S plane right okay uh, reversal of roc means that these points are going to reverse just reverse okay beta is going to come this side alpha is going to go that side fine now next property is differentiation in time domain what happens when you differentiate your signal so if xt had laplace transform xs roc was r what happens when you differentiate the signal in time domain you're going to get multiplication with s multiplication with s and this new roc is going to be a superset for r okay effect of differentiation in time domain is multiplication of corresponding laplace transform by r s right so uh, and uh, see the associated roc this associated roc r dash is unchanged unless there's a pole zero cancellation at s is equal to zero so what are they going uh, trying to say is see if my xs suppose suppose this xs was something of this form one by s into s plus two suppose now when you differentiated the signal in time domain ma what is going to happen to laplace transform this is going to get multiplied with s now they are going to be a this is what this is what is called a pole zero cancellation the pole zero cancellation occurred at s is equal to zero initially there was a pole at s is equal to zero and minus two now there is no pole at s is equal to zero this has only one pole now the roc is going to change that is why we've used this symbol okay that this r dash is going to be a superset of this that it is going to contain this roc or some addition okay this is what we are saying now next property is differentiation in s domain differentiation in s domain what is going to happen so all these properties can be verified okay proved very easily we are going to take proofs of some important properties uh, rest you can do yourself so if you are multiplying the signal with minus t this is going to be this is going to get you differentiation in s domain okay this is going to yield differentiation in s domain so if you are multiplying any signal with minus t this is going to be differentiation in s domain okay we've looked at an example for this right ut has laplace uh, transform 1 by s 
the ROC, real part of it is greater than 0 and I multiplied this signal with TUT suppose I multiply with minus UT what should happen this should be differentiation in S domain which is minus 1 by S square right and we've already seen that so this minus TUT has this so I can just cancel these minus signs for both the sides and we have seen that Laplace for TUT is 1 by S square only. We saw this in the table itself, right? So this verifies this property. Okay, so multiplication with minus T in time domain is going to create differentiation in S domain. Right. Now next property is integration in time domain. What happens when you integrate the signal in time domain? So suppose you had a signal XT which had Laplace XS and ROC was R. Now you decided to integrate the signal in time domain. Then what happens to the Laplace? This is, see, integration is a reverse operation of uh, differentiation, right? So in differentiation, we got multiplication with this. Now you're going to get division with this. So going to be 1 by S XS. And what happens to the ROC? This is going to be R intersection. Why? Why so? Because we multiplied with 1 by S, right? 1 by S is the Laplace transform of UT. So, uh, whenever you are, uh, okay, we will look this in the next portion. So, this is what going to happen, okay? We are going to get division by S in the Laplace domain. Right. So, Laplace transform operation corresponding to time domain integration is multiplication by 1 by S and uh, fine. So uh, I am going to explain this ROC in this part if you just look at convolution. Convolution this would be better explained here. So what am I saying about convolution if X1 T has Laplace X1 of S and ROC R1 X2 T has Laplace x2 of s and roc r2 then what are we saying x1 t convolution x2 t is going to be multiplication in laplace domain and what is going to be the roc this is going to be super set of intersection of both the rocs okay see this is why we started studying Laplace, right? We said that our con complicated convolution operation is going to become simple multiplication operation in Laplace domain. That is why we started studying this Laplace, right? So that is, this is the property that we you that we wanted to use. That is why we started studying this. And now what happens to this, uh, this ROC? See, ROC is going to be intersection of the individual ROCs. The common region that these two signals have, okay, the common uh, region of S-plane that these two signals have is going to be the ROC of this combined signal, right? Now, if you look at this one, uh, you can explain why this ROC is like this. Uh, so, integration of a signal can also be, can also be called as convolution of the signal with unit step signal right we saw that a convolution of any signal with unit step signal leads to integration of the signal that is from minus infinity to t now if you are convoluting a signal with the unit step signal you can also say that this is going to be multiplication in the s domain laplace of unit step signal is 1 by s laplace of your signal is xs now since this ROC is going to be intersection, this is why R dash is going to be intersection of R and real part of S greater than 0. This is the ROC of unit step signal. Fine. Uh, so, I am just to sum up, I am writing all the properties of the Laplace transform in a single table for you to refer anytime. I would suggest you also just make this table so that you can use it anytime you want. So now we're taking, uh, so we're just summing up what we've seen already, okay. Uh, so we have considered the signal XT which has Laplace transform XS and ROCR. 
signals x1 t and x2 t with laplace transform x1 s and x2 s and roc r1 and r2 so we're just going to quickly see all the properties that we've just seen linearity property what is going to happen what is going to be the laplace for this function it's going to be a1 x1 s plus a2 x2 s and what is going to happen to the roc r dash is going to be superset of r1 intersection r2 right what happens when you're shifting in time if you're shifting by minus t naught you're going to have multiplication with e to the power minus st naught in excess roc is going to remain the same because you're not touching the argument of the signal now what is going to happen when you're multiplying with e to the power s naught t this is going to create a shift in uh, s domain but a shift of minus s naught and roc is going to be changed by real part of s naught since uh, okay we saw this graphically also what happens in time scaling amplitude scaling by one by mod a and scaling of laplace transform by one by a this is going to become x of s by a right and r dash is also going to get scaled by a this is a special case of scaling so this is going to be x of minus s since uh, mod of minus one is going to be one r dash is going to be minus r differentiation in t is going to get multiplication in s multiplication with s in s domain and r dash is going to be superset of r why because there may be a pole zero cancellation occurring due to multiplication with s in that case this is going to be something more than this right but multiplication minus t in time domain is going to have differentiation in s domain roc is going to be the same integration in time domain multiplication with 1 by s and roc is going to be superset of r intersection real part of s greater than 0 we saw the reason also and lastly if two signals are convoluted in time domain they will be multiplied in s domain and roc is going to be intersection of both the signals when using these properties you can just uh, complete the table that we saw earlier just complete and refer to this so if you are multiplying with e to the power minus a t in time domain what is going to happen shift of plus a in this s domain also roc is going to change okay or what is going to happen this s plus a should be greater than zero or what can i say real part of this should be greater than minus real part of a similarly for this signal okay and roc is going to change now when you have performed this operation perform the shifting multiplication with t if you just perform multiplication with t what is going to happen uh, one factorial upon power is going to increase by one roc is going to be the same is this multiplication with e to the power minus at in uh, cos omega naught or sin omega naught is going to create a shift of plus a in the s domain okay so you can just complete this table uh, using the properties that we have studied of this Laplace transform right so now we look at some questions on properties and Laplace transform